So there are three ideas that we can get from here, uh, from uh, Acts 14, verses 21 to 28. The, uh, the number one is these believers must continue in the faith, being encouraged to endure much suffering to enter the kingdom of God. Let's read this together. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith, and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the encouragement that they gave to the churches that they have set up through the preaching of the gospel is that they should continue in the faith that there will be many, through many tribulations, through many sufferings, through many difficulties, we must enter the kingdom of God. Now here, here are some of the difficulties you may have to face because we are getting into the kingdom of God. You know, they're trying to deny ourselves. See, Jesus challenges, if anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. It's difficult to deny yourself the comfort of living in this world and surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the suffering. Trying to deny yourself, you know, to come and listen and sit in our church and listen to the word of God, not to go out to the parking lot. And, and, uh, and have fun and, have the, and talk about what you want to talk about. But to come here and deny yourself and come and sit here and listen to the word of God. There may be sleepless nights. You see, this is Paul talking about the hardships that he went through. Many a sleepless night. Hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. I don't think any of us have gone through this. I mean, we, 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 sometimes we're running short of money, but I, don't, I haven't heard of any of us who are going through hunger and thirst and without food or in cold. See, we, we live in wealth, even though we complain sometimes that we don't have much money, but we are wealthy people, right? Because these are the kind of sufferings that you have to go through. Then, then there, is, there may be a sickness, the thorn in the flesh of Paul. It may, be a, it may have been a sickness that he, he said that um, he asked God three times and God said, no, I'm not taking it from you. And so he said, you know, there's a thorn, on a, 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 a thorn that was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. But you see, whatever it is that, that Satan is giving us, even if it's a sickness, it works for us, isn't it? It works for Paul to prevent Paul from being conceited, to humble him at all the time. And so suffering works like that for us. We don't want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experience in Asia. Sometimes we may be afflicted in places. You may go to places and you face persecutions there. Or you, know, um, or you may be abandoned by believers, you see. Uh, you are aware that all who are in Asia turned away from me. You see, that, that's what happened to us. There, there are other ways in which we suffer, but you must be prepared for that, that we will suffer many things in order to enter the kingdom of God. But do not be surprised. Do not be surprised by your fiery trials. You see, sometimes we come to church and we expect everything will go well, right? Uh, there's the, the message of healthy, wealthy, uh, you know, and, and, and things will go well for you. Right? And, and wise, you'll be wise in everything. Everything will go, see, that's the, that's the false message of the prosperity gospel. We Christians, we know that we will be facing suffering in this world. The only thing that God has promised for us in this world, the only thing is that we will suffer in order to enter the kingdom. If you're not suffering this moment, thank God for that. If you live long in this world, you will suffer. But don't be surprised by that as though something strange was happening to you. But rejoice. Rejoice insofar as you share in Christ's sufferings. We are sharing in the suffering of Jesus Christ. Do you know, for those who will make it to heaven in the end, there is an expectation in heaven that you have been through the great tribulation, great affliction in this world, right? All kinds of different sufferings, including sicknesses, and, and persecutions, being slandered, all kinds of suffering. You will have to go through this, because this is Revelation 17. Who are these clothed in white robes who are standing in the presence of God, and from where have they come? I said to him, this is John speaking, so you know, and he said to me, these are the ones coming out of great tribulation, coming out of great suffering. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, 
We must wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb, but there is an expectation that you will suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Not only that, do you know, you must remember when you go through suffering that God has not destined us for wrath anymore. We have been reconciled to God. We are friends of God. We have been made his friends through Jesus Christ. We have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no more wrath if you are a Christian. When we go through sufferings of many kinds, it's not the wrath of God anymore, but he's working through that to, to help us to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you must remember that when we suffer, it is God disciplining us as a father, disciplining his sons. You see, real sons are always disciplined. That the false and illegit illegitimate children are the ones that is very difficult uh, for us to discipline. But you see, when we go through suffering, you must remember God is treating you as sons and daughters. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? See, we are disciplined to know that we are sons, true sons of God. But you see, even though we may go through many troubles, we must remember it is the Lord himself who made us see many troubles and calamities, and he will revive us again, right? Even from the depths of the earth, even in the, if in the end we die because of the suffering that we go through, because of the afflictions, because of the sicknesses, because of the persecutions, even if we die, and many Christians die every day from persecutions, even from the depth of the earth, you will bring, the Lord will bring us up again. And therefore, when we go through suffering, when we are being reviled and persecuted and other all kinds of evil against us falsely uh, on the account of Jesus, rejoice and be glad. Your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before us. There's nothing new under the sun. So we have to expect that we will suffer many things in order to enter the kingdom of God. The second idea is this. To continue in the faith and endure suffering, the church needs elders who are believers. Let's read this together, verse 23. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in order for us to remain, to continue in our faith, very important to appoint elders who are believers. Do you see what, what they did? They appointed elders and then they fast and pray and they committed them to the Lord in whom they believed. Right? It's no use to have unbelieving elders. Right? We, we, in our church, you know, we want to make sure that the elders we have are those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and have shown that in the way that we live, that we are worthy of being elders and ministers of our church. So I'm talking about in general about the leadership of our church. But it must, it's very important for the elders, for the leaders of our church to hold firmly to the trustworthy word as taught. See, we, we, we want leaders who've been taught well uh, from the scriptures. You know, this is what I'm, what, what I'm doing every Sunday. You know, hopefully you're learning something. Hopefully you're opening up your mind so that you're, you're not just sitting there and you go away and nothing happens to you. I trust that the word of God works. You know, hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that the, the elders should be able to give instruction in sound doctrine but also to rebuke those who are contradicted. So two, two things we do from our role as elders. We want to encourage you to stand firm in the truth, but we also want to show you this, you know, where, the, where the lies are, where false teachers are, where false teachings are, so that you would know and then you turn away from it. Okay? Uh, but also, you see, what we are doing, hopefully uh, for us pastors in the church, we teach you in public, but also we want to come uh, house to house. Right? So in, in one way, this is why we encourage you to do family devotions at home, because, you know, house to house, it should be church, should all, always happen at home. So, you know, you are young people, you should always be uh, concerned, right, that there should be prayers, family devotion at home. So we teach in public, but also house to house. You know, we do visitation as well. Uh, but also, you know, this role includes feeding the sheep. That's what we're doing. Right? We're here, we're teaching you. That's what we want you young, young people. Don't go outside there, sit at the parking lot, please. It's, it's humiliating for both for you and for me. You come here prepared and you're not here. You don't really want to be fed with the word of God. 
You come to church only one and a half hour or something, right? Come and sit still here in church. Don't go out there because when you go out there, the devil will grab hold of you and feed you all kinds of evil about us, about me maybe, right? Um, it's okay you, you speak all kinds of evil about me, but, but when you're fed with the evil of the evil ones, see, there's no hope at all. So come to church, stay in church so that you will get, you get fed as the sheep of God with the word of God, right? We are here to shepherd the flock of God, not under compulsion, Right? Not because you, know, you guys are expecting. We, we do it because we love you people. We love the Lord Jesus Christ. Not under compulsion. Not for shameful gain. We're not doing it for money. Right? We don't need your money. Because the Lord provides for us. I know that some people are slandering me as if I'm here because of the money and that sort of thing. But the Lord knows my heart. I could have done this work for free. Right? If it was possible. But because, you know, we are registered in, in, this, in this country and therefore there's an expectation that some money is given to me and Steve Venny and those who are pastoring. We're not doing it to domineer over those uh, over you, right? We're not domineer. We, we want to be examples to you, the flock of God, right? And so, you know, you must remember us. You must remember your leaders as those who speak the word that they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had fulfilled. And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And there remained no little time with the disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So they went back to the church that sent them. They gathered the people. They declared all that God had done with them. See, God is with us. He does great things with us how he had opened a door, and he opened a door of faith for the Gentiles. So this door, when it was opened, therefore, Christianity in the gospel came to us in Tonga. See? It's because the, the door was opened in the first missionary journey of Paul that other missionaries started thinking about going beyond, you know, to the, to the ends of the earth, to the Pacific, to bring the gospel to us. But you see, God is for us. God is for us, so who can be against us? Yes, there will be many, many, many difficulties in life. Paul is speaking about that. The many difficulties that we face in life. But that, that cannot be against us, you know, because God is for us. None of those difficulties will ever be against us, okay? Uh, because, you see, because God is with us and for us, he opens our hearts through his word. See, faith comes from hearing. So when you come to hear the word of, of Christ, you come to hear the word of Christ, it should open in your heart's faith. If your heart, if, if there's no faith in you, it means that your heart is still hardened, that your senses have been blocked, right? Your ears are still blocked and your eyes are still blinded. I warned you in the past few Sundays, you know, do not think that you're doing it yourself. No, the evil one is doing it in your life. You belong to your father, the devil, because he's blinding you. But, but faith comes from hearing, right? The word of God, if you open your heart and you ask the Lord to open your heart, the word of God will come into you and bring faith and create faith in you. And look at what he's done. He brings his spirit as well to us and he works miracles, see? He works the miracles of transforming our lives, see? This miracle will happen in you if you open up. If the Lord opens your heart, you see, sometimes you harden your heart, but the Lord also hardens your heart as well. And you open your heart, but also the Lord opens your heart, like he did to Lydia. Right? He opens our heart, supplies the Spirit, and works miracle so that we will listen to him and see the changes in our lives. See, these are the changes that happen in us. See, why is, the, why is your life not changing? Why is it you don't find um, coming to church, listening to the word of God, exciting? Why is it that you young people are more excited to stay outside in the parking lot than to sit here? It's because the devil is blinding your heart and your mind. See, you're meant to be, to no longer walk as Gentiles do. If you open up your heart to the word of the Lord, you should know, you must no longer walk as Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. See, this is not the way we learn Christ. You have heard about him, you were taught, and you've always been taught in Christ. As the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and to put on a new self created after the likeness of God. Young people, 
Look to God. You look miserable with all kinds of things that you're getting into your lives. Look to God. Learn from Jesus. Be transformed. There is no hope out there in the world. Whatever it is that you are finding hope in is, whatever it is that you find more exciting than sitting here in church listening to the word of God, there is no hope. There's only hopelessness out there and despair. Turn to God, right? And be transformed into the likeness of God himself. Let's pray. Tolot. Tokon my ache.